This is the booth of BYD at CES. It was located in the south pavilion of the Las Vegas Convention Center, in the section Automotive. We were expecting a fancy electric car on display, like BYD did for other shows, and just like Waymo, BMW and Honda did for this edition of CES. We soon found out instead that the booth was representing the battery division of BYD. BYD produces its own batteries for its cars and has developed technologies that make the company a leader also in this domain. BYD also supplies batteries to other companies, including Toyota, for use in some of the electric vehicles that Toyota sells in China. BYD also has a deal with Borg Warner, and Borg Warner is a supplier of the BYD blade battery to Ford and General Motors. This high profile in battery production was not evident from the booth. As we can see, in fact, it is quite small, and it was very similar in size to those of the many vendors of small electronics at the show. The space, however, was enough to display all kinds of batteries, and for all kinds of small devices, from smartphones to smartwatches to even e-cigarettes to the smallest coin batteries. Here we can take a glimpse at the batteries on display. This reminded us that BYD was and is a giant tech company even before entering the automotive business. In fact, many of the technology companies exhibiting at CES had some business with BYD. Take Samsung for example. These are Samsung innovative folding phones. The hinges are probably the most important components. When the new model of folding phone comes out, one of the selling points is the improved opening and closing and the new smoother motion of the new model. And who supplies the components for these hinges? BYD, of course. Apple doesn't exhibit at CES or other trade shows, but among the exhibitors, there were companies that provide components for the Apple iPad and iPhone. According to an article in the Wall Street Journal, BYD assembles over 30% of Apple's iPad, and BYD is also involved in producing components for the iPhone. Because of the tensions between China and the US, giant multinationals from China like Huawei and Xiaomi stopped exhibiting at CES in 2020 and 2022 respectively. But until then, both companies presented innovations like Huawei's first foldable phone and Xiaomi innovative digital tablets. BYD manufactures most of Huawei's mobile phones, and BYD also works with Xiaomi in assembling Xiaomi smartphones and in supplying technology for Xiaomi's electric vehicles. These collaborations confirm what Stella Lee, CEO of BYD USA, said in a previous event, which also was the topic of one of our videos. So actually, maybe some background. BYD, uh, like maybe 80% of people already use BYD product. If you use pad or phone, one third of smartphone were produced by us. So how did BYD go from a manufacturer of electronic components to a leading electric cars manufacturer? Well, first of all, we need to look at the big picture. And the big picture was illustrated very effectively by renowned economist Jeffrey Sachs, at a recent event in Indonesia. Let's take a listen. Because decarbonizing earlier will be a competitive advantage, not a disadvantage. And incidentally, just to make one quick digression on that, why is China so competitive in electric vehicles right now? Well, one of the reasons is that in the US and Europe, they spent the last 10 years saying, well, maybe yes, maybe no. We don't really want to do it. It's not really going to happen. And China decided 10 years ago, we're going to do it. And now they completely dominate the international market. And of course, Tesla is a Chinese car. I don't know if Elon would put it exactly that way. Uh, at least the ones that are produced in the Shanghai Gigafactory. And so China went ahead and did this. Is it losing because it went early? No. Of course, the US and Europe are throwing up protectionist barriers in desperation right now because they missed the curve. 
not because China did anything wrong, China did it right, and the US and Europe delayed and prevaricated and said, no, we're not gonna do this, and now China dominates this market. So my point is to make these transformations, which are really gonna happen, you're gonna have to plan regionally. And that's true both in the energy sector. This is also the opinion of BYD America as a CEO. Take a listen. Now the uh, big challenge in different country, then you have the, some country lack of government, uh, like a policy to support that direction. And some country we have policy, but we don't have enough charging infrastructure. And some country like here, government gave different opinion. <laughs> so it's very confused to the OEM, confused to the uh, like a consumer. So I think uh, uh, China did a very good job. They are very solid from day one. And so BYD is the most successful company to carry out this plan in China. There is a vast business literature about the growth of BYD and we can summarize it in this chart. Integration and innovation were the words we came across more frequently. Here is also a quick summary of the evolution of BYD as a car manufacturer. Again, in a previous event, the CEO of BYD America gives details on how these resources were put in place and how they will apply to the rest of the world as well. I was a C C former CEO for BYD Electronics Division. So at that time, it's an innovation center. Everybody talking about what's high tech, what's the future technology there. And, but now it's totally different. It's in the car industry. So we see every country, the first majority adoption will be PHEV. People will experience their EV. The first one is PHEV. And then after that, so after several years driving, they build up confidence. Then they have a charger. They know how to charge the car. So then the new replacement, 70% were by the EV. To learn more about BYD, we suggest to click on the link above and at the end of this video to watch the full interview with Ms. Stella Lee. And you can also subscribe to this channel as we will have more to say on this topic.